Yeah, thanks for having us today, y'all. Um, you know, new week, new challenges. Uh, proud of my team. Uh, you know, we we we've done what we're supposed to do. I think. Um, again, I, I think our kids have played really well at times. Uh, didn't play as well. I didn't think Sunday. Didn't play as hard as we did on on Wednesday when we opened against SMU. Um, you know, SMU returned four starters and had, um, you know, they had, they had lost seven games the previous year by 22 total points and, and still were 15 and 15. So I, I really had a lot of respect for Travis and their staff. And uh, we played really well, forced 35 turnovers and, and uh, uh, had 39 points off those turnovers. And then North Texas, I've been told, and, and I think they're really good. Uh, they're better this year than they were last year. And uh, last year, they, they took Texas to five points in Hawaii. And so we, you know, we played, I didn't think we played with near as much energy. Um, and yet we were still able to, to do what we did. And we, we scored, you know, scored a lot of points. And this one right here was really, really hard to deal with. She was honoring and uh, uh, really played. Um, I thought our team played well. Uh, at times offensively, defensively, not so much. So we're a work in progress. Uh, we have a, a, a well-coached La Tech team coming in here uh, tomorrow night. And, uh, you know, we're going we're gonna to have to do and be who we are uh, if we're going to have, you know, success every night. So we've got to continue to get better and uh, we've got to bring the, bring the energy. All right, uh, Danny, first question. Yeah, for both uh, Vic and Charlie, before I ask you guys to look ahead, um, kind of ask you to look back on Sunday. And now that there's been a few days, have you guys been able to put into context exactly what Charlie accomplished, um, which statistically speaking is one of the greatest games that's ever been had at this university? Um, I would just say that game, uh, it meant a lot to all of us. I mean, just for us playing hard, like Coach said, we didn't play nearly as hard as we did in the SMU game, but I feel like my teammates in particular found me in a lot of open, open spots. It wasn't just me. I feel like uh, the opportunities presented themselves when they did, when we uh, executed well offensively, when Coach called plays at certain times. Um, when someone's hot, um, if it's not broke, don't fix it. So we just continued to do what we needed to do in order to get the win that day. I've seen lots of performances in 35, 36 years in coaching, and that's certainly one of the most dominant. Um, you know, again, I thought, or I thought her teammates did a great job of setting her up and made some really good passes to her. Uh, High low obviously was a big part of that, but she made two threes. She made one coming down, running the left wing like a guard, caught it and caught it in stride and turned it loose. And I mean, She's got a unique skill set, y'all, and um, she's she's got a chance, I think, to be one of the greatest ever here. And there's been some great ones here, y'all. We're talking about Larissa Davis and that Smith. There's been some great players here in the history of women's basketball, and this one right here can can be a part of that elite group. She's got that kind of skill set, and she's she's created a little bit of a a challenge for me in that you know I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of take pride in being the mad scientist and, and trying to put her in some different, unique, you know, positions where she can take advantage of some of the things that she can do. So it's going to be fun. And uh, we just, you know, we, we, we've just got to continue to get better and keep working as a team. But I think she would tell you, her teammates, you know, they, they did a great job of setting her up and, and, and giving her, and again, 14 for 15 at the free throw line. How many six fives can walk up there and, and shoot free throws like she can? Probably James. Uh, Howard, you're up. Appreciate it. Vic, Charlie, good to chat, chat with you both as always. Um, Vic, if I could start with you, I have one for each of you. Specific to Charlie's game, when you first took this job, you talked about the importance of reaching out to Charlie and, and you know, making sure to have her as, a, I think you said something like a base of operations, but what, if anything, is different, improved beyond even what you knew of her game when she came in and when you came in last spring? Well, I think the one thing that stands out for me uh, is from day one, her motor 
just runs at a at a really high level. Individual workouts, you know, she doesn't even take off a play in individual workouts. I mean, she's explosive in everything she does in an individual workout. Um, and and so her work ethic really um, impressed me early on, and it's never wavered. Uh, practices, you know, very rarely does she she down there taking herself out of a out of a out of something that we're doing. And there's other players that need to get in and get get reps, but not very often is she one to take herself out of something. Um, and that's a sign of a great player. You know, she makes a mistake, she fix gets it gets out. If there's a consequence, and then she gets back in and we fix it, and she's moving on. But um, I just I've seen her improve from the first individual that we had in the middle of July to to right now by leaps and bounds. And yet I still feel like she can she's got a, a ways to go to really be the best she can be. She's she hasn't seen a great you know to me she still hasn't seen great a great defensive team yet and how people are going to tr- challenge her and you know but I do think we'll be able to play through her. And that's important when you got a big and you can play through them. That's really important. And I think Charlie possesses that skill that's going to allow us to play through her on some nights when she might have three people hanging on her like clothes on a clothesline. So she's 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 unique, Howard. She's got a, a, a really unique skill set that allows her to be put in a bunch of different situations to be successful. Well, that, and that's actually a jumping off point for my question for you, Charlie, which is, you know, Vic talks about how unique you are, and certainly your development level at this point in your career is is singular. But there are more and more players at the next level. You know, we've seen the last three MVPs at the WNBA level are six four, six five, and capable of doing a lot of inside outside. And I just I wonder whether you think your development uh, as a player growing up had anything to do with seeing more and more of those models and how much of that stems from, you know, that becoming more of the um, more common, let's say at the very highest level uh, in the game. Yeah, I definitely think it makes you more hard to guard. Growing up, I saw players like, I looked up to Candace Parker, like Asia Wilson, people like that. And just watching them play, you know, they can go down low, they can step out. It makes you really hard to guard. And uh, I feel like when you're one dimensional, you're limited. But I feel like if you have the skill set that I have, which is unique, and you keep building on it, it makes you harder to guard. Um, and speaking about the next level, I mean, it's more common in the next level because there are six, seven posts, and you can't be six, three, you know, six, two down at the post. So you have to build your game to where you can be hard to guard. And I feel like possessing a, a skill set, shooting outside and, and dribbling, things like that, can put you in a different, a good position, and have a good coach to put you in a position to make plays for your team and not just be one dimensional. Thank you both. Thanks, Howard. Just as a reminder for everybody, if uh, you have a question, you can just use the raise hand function on Zoom. Uh, go ahead, Danny. Vic, is there an update on Lauren's status? And to follow that up, um, consistently when we've asked you about Lauren in this appeal, you've used the word fighting. Uh, <laughs> what exactly are you guys fighting? Because it does seem like transfers are being approved at a pretty high basis so what is the hold up with lauren in her case you just said it i mean it's it's really frustrating danny i'm just telling you and uh you know we're 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 uh we're now at a at a stage where um you know we're we're continuing to to fight for what we feel like is is right for the kid and i'm at the place here at texas where you know what we're gonna fight for our kids and we've got administrators fighting. Um, I'm doing everything I can, um, but our, our administration, I mean, I, I can't say enough about them uh, all the way up to the top to, to Del Conte and, uh, and our compliance folks, uh, you know, Chris Blonsky, we're all trying to, to make a case for this kid because we feel like it, there's, there's something justified. And unfortunately, I can't really share a lot of the specifics with you right now, but uh, at some point I'd be glad to, but we're just we're just hoping like heck that I mean it, you said it you look across the country and it, it, it it's it's at an incredible percentage rate how many kids are getting that immediately eligible 
and um, they even sent out a, you know, there's there's been some some things sent out from from our organization on, to all our coaches, wanting to know, you know, if we would agree or disagree with them approving it right now, you know, across the country, the one-time transfer because of COVID, um, you know, just you're going to need players at some point. You could potentially be down to you know, four, five, six kids, and that's not a healthy environment um, for competition. I mean, you you think about playing a 40-minute game, you're going to have four or five kids play 40 minutes that night. That's not healthy. And uh, I think we're all, including the NCAA, we're all about the kids, and we don't want to put them in a position to, to not be successful. So, um, you know, there's a lot going on out there just in, in – in, uh, um, you know, in the association as well as what we're trying to get done for her. So we're just going to keep fighting. I, I will say this thing. We, we may have something by, you know, we may have something by the end of the week. And a quick follow-up. Uh, is there an update on Kyra and her availability? Yeah. So uh, good news. We got it about 30 minutes ago. She's, she's probably going to see some minutes tomorrow night. So how many? Don't know. I wouldn't say she's going to just go out there and light it up for 30 plus, but She's going to get to play a little bit, get her feet wet, and, and uh, she needs to get back in practice today and and get back to doing some things. She's going to have some rust to knock off, but that's a kid that's been around a, a while, and uh, it won't take her too long. She's been so diligent and worked so hard in her rehab, and, and Heidi, our trainer, has been incredible with her and, um, and Zach. So uh, I'm excited for her. She's, she's chomping at the bit. Uh, go ahead, uh, Riley. Hi, Coach. Um, you know, how long? Uh-oh, Riley's froze. I think we lost Riley. Uh, all right, we'll, we'll come back to him if we can get it uh, figured out. Go ahead, Zach. Hey, guys. Uh, thanks for the time, as always. Um, you know, Vic, you used the words, like with Charlie, with, with as one of the greatest and there's not a lot of coaches who are going to go that far publicly, especially when she's sitting right there next to you. What is it about the nature of your relationship so far that even what, six, seven months in that you feel comfortable giving her that kind of boost and that she can handle that? Because it's only game two, really, you know? Well, number one, uh, I'm always going to keep her grounded. Uh, you know, I, I talked to all of our team about staying humble and staying hungry. And, uh, and I'm real with her. I mean, I, you know, she knows I'm going to coach her every day. I'm going to demand of her. I'm not going to be her buddy and take it easy on her. I'm going to coach her and I'm going to make her better. And uh, I think we have that understanding and respect. Uh, but I also think she's a great kid. And um, I think she enjoys being a kid. And I like being around, you know, young people that, that enjoy life and enjoy being kids. I mean, that's, I'm in the kid business. So she's a lot of fun to be around. Um, at the same time, when we step on the floor and we step between the lines, I think she's mature enough to, to understand that's work time and business time. And we got to get better. She's only played really one year, y'all. That was last year. I mean, her freshman year, she, I mean, I remember playing Texas wondering, okay, when's Charlie coming into the game? And, and, you know, she didn't play a lot. And uh, then last year she, she, she played quite a bit and, and had a really good year and was all Big 12. But, I mean, y'all, I've done this a long time. I've been around a lot of great players. And um, you know what? Why not embrace the expectation? And, 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 you know, if you have goals, if you have as, you know, aspirations of being the best, well, let's talk about it. Why, why run from it and hide from it? Um, and, and again, she's, she knows what, what if she wants to be one of the all time greatest that's ever been at Texas, she knows what that entails. If she just wants to be, have a great season, you know, every now and then, then that, that's okay too. But that happens all the time. But if you want to be one of the greatest, if you want to be in the in, mentioned with the greatest that have ever played here, she knows what that equation looks like. And, uh, and we talk about that. And, and so, uh, again, I, it's kind of like being picked first to win your conference. You can either lead from the front and try to do it, which is really hard, or it's real easy when you're picked 
fifth or sixth and you finish third, you know, everybody's, you know, that's a little bit easier in my mind to do. It doesn't matter who we're playing from now on. She's going to be the focal point of everybody's defensive game plan. That's the way it is. So there's no point in hiding from it or running from it. We got to embrace that. It's my job to teach her how to deal with different things, double teams, you know, whatever. And at the same time, put her in positions to where, you know what, other teams are going to have a hard time guarding her there. Or they're going to have a hard, guard, guard, hard time guarding her in that action. Um, but at the same time, it's about the team and what's best for the team and for us to win. She knows for us to win every night, she's got to do certain things. Celeste Taylor has to do certain things every night for us to win. And if one of those two take a night off, we probably aren't going to win. So everybody's got a job to do. We always say it, do your job. And for, for Charlie, she's got to, every day, she's got a job to do. She's got to do her job. I got a bunch of young freshmen looking at her every day going, okay, well, she's working pretty hard. I guess I'll work hard too. And that's, that's, that's part of being an upper class because I don't have any seniors. I mean, I have Kyra and that's it. So my junior class, her, Audrey, and, and, and Joanne, that's my three juniors in my junior class. So that's who's setting the example. And I'm going to tell you all something. Those are three really special kids that are doing a great job of setting a great example for our younger kids. And then Celeste, you know, again, another motor that just never shuts off. If I could just kind of really follow up quickly, and Charlie, for your perspective, then after hearing not only what he had said before, but now all this, how do you then compartmentalize and shoulder that expectation and make it sure that you don't let up and that you do what you need to do for the team to win? I just make sure that I just show up every day, being the best example I can be. Uh, that goes along with preparing for a game, preparation for a game, having a good mindset consistently, not getting too high or too low because I've been in this position before and I've been dependent on before, but at the same time, it's more responsibility when you're an upperclassman. Um, you know, you just have to take on a, a big role. It's a, it's a lot of shoes to fill and you just have to be able to be dependent on, but at the same time, handle your situation and what's going on with you, you know? So just being the best leader that I can be is gonna help this team a lot. And that's all I could do in every situation I, I get. Cool, thanks. Uh, go ahead, Howard. Rick, a little bit different topic, but you guys a few weeks in and the season a few weeks in, it's obvious this is not a normal season in terms of scheduling, in terms of any way you customarily think through come March, which teams ought to be in, what the seedings ought to be. A any of that seems out the window. I, I just I just wonder, is, is somebody – thinking, you know, bigger picture, just in terms of the game as a whole, what do you think is a way forward to be able to figure that out in a way that's fair to the largest number of teams that gives a team like yours that should be in the title mix an opportunity to do so? Well, first of all, I mean, we, if, if we can navigate our schedule, we've got a good schedule. Our, I mean, I got – a and in Tennessee and non-conference. I had South Florida at one time, uh, but they we lost each other because we started so late. Um, I said this the other day to our kids, and I'm going to rephrase it today in film. I said, hey, we only get 25 opportunities this year, so you can't take any of them for granted. So you need to be ready to go every night. We're talking this after the game. That's not true anymore. <laughs> We don't know how many opportunities we're going to get. You know, we could get a phone call tonight or tomorrow morning that says some, you know, support staff person at Louisiana Tech's got tested positive and they're not coming or they can't get out of the bus. I mean, that's happened already this season where you got a team outside of an arena. They can't get out of the bus because somebody tested. So we're not guaranteed anything. And so I, I think the answer to your question is I, I think there's going to be a lot of eye tests, uh, I, I think. And, you know, that's going to come from more than one person, and it ain't going to come from me and you, mm -hmm. you know. But I, I think there'll be a lot of eye tests. Again, if we're fortunate enough to be able to navigate our schedule, if, we, if we're if we successful, the proof will be in the pudding. 
Well, I, I just related to that though. Like, are you going to look for opportunities to add? Like you said, there at any moment a game could be canceled. Yep. There are, you know, people like Jeff Walls are going yep. on Twitter yep. and, and, and adding games. Will you do that to kind of maximize your resume that everyone seems to be making up along on the fly? Absolutely. So first person on, on my call list is Jose at South Florida. He and I have already talked. And he needs he needs us. He needs the game. He needs against a game against the Power Five, and 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 we we would be glad to play him. So um, that'll be the first one on speed dial. You know, is, is to call him. Uh, I think I saw already where an A and M's already going to play Lamar again. They played him last week. They're playing him this week uh, because somebody on their schedule. I think you've got to have that kind of flexibility. It'd be nice if you could fill it with somebody comparable to who you're losing. You know, if in our case, our schedule's pretty good. So I wouldn't want to fill it with somebody in the 300s. You know, I don't, that wouldn't do my team any good. Uh, and, and now that I know my team, like I was, I was not real, like I was wanting to play a 300 team that opening night because I didn't really have a great feel. But after we played, I was glad we played SMU and, and glad we played a team with four starters back. And uh, again, I think they're going to be fine. And, and I think we played that well. But so for, for me, knowing my team and, you know, quite honestly, knowing them now, they probably want to play somebody really good, Howard. You know, they're, they're not interested in going out there and beating somebody 50 or 60. It's not going to do any good. So that, that'd be our perspective. But now at the same time, I'm not just not going to play if I can't find the the optimum person to play. We need to play, you know, and, and, and <laughs> it, it's a challenge. There's no question it's a challenge. And then you've got the regional part, you know, because of money and, and, and all that for certain teams, there's the regional issue. Uh, Arizona was on our schedule, you know, and I know they've been really trying to find people to play. Again, that was one of the games that got wiped off the slate because we started late. And so we, we couldn't, we, we, we lost those games. We lost South Florida, Stanford, and Arizona. That's pretty, pretty good ones. And, and so uh, you think now, you, you think about being the coach with a young team with that schedule. I already think my schedule that I've had left to me is pretty good. That is a monster schedule. So, um, you know, it, it's, it's a challenge, but uh, again, I think being at a place like Texas, we're going to have, if something were to happen, we would be providing an opportunity to do a lot of different things to find that game. Great sense, Rick. Thanks. All right, we're uh, starting to run out of time here, but um, I, I believe Riley joined back up with us. So uh, go ahead, Riley. Hey, Coach, I completely apologize. Uh, no my worries. question was, how long are you expecting to play uh, with nine, and do you think that will be more of a challenge against teams like Texas A&M, Tennessee? Yeah, so we get Kyra back today. You were off, but we get Kyra back today. So that gets us to 10. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll – um, I do worry about depth, Riley. Um, depth is, is – could, could, could be an issue. Um, again, of, of our 10, four freshmen. And so that's that's a that's a that's a big load for a young person to take, you know, throwing them into an A&M or a Tennessee this early in their careers. Um, and, and yet it's beneficial come February, and March, you know, for those kids. I mean, that's invaluable. So, um, you know, depth depth is a little bit concerning, but at the same time, I, I do know my team now. And I've got some kids that they don't want to come out of games. Like she don't want to come out. Like she's she's in great, she's as in good a shape as anybody we got. And she doesn't get tired. And she don't want to come out of the game, which I can appreciate. So and Celeste is kind of the same way, you know, she don't want to come out of games. So when you have players like that, as long as they can play effectively and efficiently, you, you, you probably aren't interested in taking them out anyway. All right, I think we've got time for one more. Uh, Danny, go ahead. 
Um, Vic, do you have a quick uh, scouting reporter on Louisiana Tech and then Charlie, um, just your thoughts about getting two more chances this week to get better and improve against a good Louisiana Tech and a really good A&M team? Yeah, um, I would just say take it one game at a time. So we got Tech tomorrow. Um, I would just say approach it the same way as we approach the other games with a good mindset just to win and go out there defensively and attack them. Um, I feel like whatever was working for us, uh, they're going to adjust. And so they're going to know what I did last game. And they're going to adjust, obviously. So we got to have another game plan for that. Um, and if they don't, I, you know, we're going to do the same thing. But I feel like um, just the getting prepared mentally for these games is going to be uh, a challenge for us. But, I mean, if we go out there with a good mindset, we can we can definitely do some damage. And so we're just looking forward to the next game one by one. Yeah, so – First thing that jumps out at me, Danny, was they had 28 fast break points last night. Um, man, that's a lot of fast break points. Uh, and so our transition, uh, obviously, will be a focus today, transition defense. Um, and, and and so, uh, you know, I, I think their guards uh, created some problems for their first two opponents uh, with how they wanted to defend. And uh, at the same time, uh, defensively, how they're going to guard us uh, I, I think, you know, I have a pretty good idea of what they're going to try to do, and, and that'll be something new for us. And so seeing our kids in that environment and, and trying to respond in, with that will be, be good for us. So, um, you know, again, uh, Brooke, I recruited Brooke uh, to Arkansas, lost her to La Tech. Um, I think she either played for a national championship or, and or won one there. Um, her and, and, and her husband, her co-head coach, and, and they do a great job. I've known her a long time, very competitive. She is super competitive, just as she was as a player. So, uh, you know, I'm, again, looking forward to the challenge. Uh, obviously, you got two programs historically in the history of this game getting together. That's always special. And... Um, and so, uh, again, looking forward to, to watching my team uh, play. I'm always excited about seeing how we progress and how we get better game to game. And uh, this is another opportunity at an evaluation um, to see that.